O oh Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. It is su sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky, which was made, which you have made, at the moon and the stars, which you set in their places, what are human beings that you think of them? Mere mortals that you care for them. Yet you made them inferior only to yourselves. You crowned them with glory and honour. You, you appointed them rulers over everything you made. You placed them over all creation. Sheep and cattle and the wild animals too. The birds and the fish and the creatures in the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord. Your greatness is seen in all the world. <clears throat>
time. Well, I, I remember going to St George's because I was brought up in St George's and the Sunday school. And we would go, all the Sunday schools would join everyone else and St George's would be packed. And it will be decorated everywhere, apples along the sides there, and big sheaves of bread um, made in a sheaf of corn. And the produce then, the gifts everyone bought, were probably, because I go back a long way, and a lot of the time was in the wartime, would be out of people's gardens. Their very best carrots, parsnips, potatoes, tomatoes, or whatever, big cabbages, big marrows. And what I remember probably was the smells of everything, the chrysanthemums then, and dahlias, which perhaps we don't use quite so much in these days, but the smells of of the harvest and the uplifting hymns, um, I remember so well. And in those days, it was a very, very big, well, lots of Sunday schools at different times in the day. And to come together like that and see, hear all the children singing and their parents. And St George's, there wouldn't be a space for anyone in those days, whatever service you went. And it's the smells and the singing that I remember. And thinking about it, people who bought their produce then, it was quite a sacrifice for them to bring their their food because food is very short. Mm. I remember when we started bringing tins and things like that. It first seemed very very strange to me, having been brought up with the idea of bringing stuff fresh stuff. But obviously, we live in different times now. But mm. it's happy memories of of harvest. And then when I was a bit older. It, um, I was allowed to go and help someone to decorate the pulpit, which was a great honour because all the ladies in St George's had their own little domain that they decorated. And I was allowed to go and actually do some of the decorating for the pulpit, which is a big step forward. So I have happy memories and uplifting times. Of, uh, harvest. My earliest memories of harvest is probably from about 50 years ago. I can't believe it's that long, but it definitely is. Myself and a few friends used to sing in the church choir, and the three of us were asked to sing at the harvest supper. Well, this harvest supper took place in the church hall, and I only remember adults being there, apart from us three. I don't remember any children being there. It was in the evening, I believe. <coughs> and the stage in the hall, from a child's point of view, seemed to be full of produce. It was totally full, it was very colourful and it just looked beautiful. Anyway, we sang um, All Things Bright and Beautiful and All Good Gifts. And I'm actually glad I was muted for the last one because my voice has definitely got lower, so not so good. Um, I think we also sang one other song, but I actually can't remember um, which one that was. Um, but my overriding memory is that of um, the nervousness I felt when I was asked to sing. Um, but it's a good memory. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, unlike Pam and Maddie, I don't have um, enormously detailed memories of uh, the Harvest Festival in, in our church. Um, when I was small, I lived in South Wales and we went to um, a little, uh, quite a poor Methodist church. And uh, I don't remember any um, real involvement by the children apart from bringing food up to the uh, up to the uh, the altar. And um, I don't remember any tins either. Uh, there were no uh, um, sort of non-perishable foods at all. It was all it was all uh, things that we bought uh, from the um, from the garden or from the greengrocers. Uh, I remember one him and that was we plough the fields and scatter that's a, a good favorite but um I, th I think nowadays the children seem to be well certainly from my experience um a lot more involved now in what's going on in the service and i think that's a wonderful thing um but uh, you know maybe my my memories probably weren't typical uh because they were in a very small church in south wales and maybe a bit different up here 
but um, that's my memory anyway. But, um, certainly, um, I, I've had some really nice memories. I remember um, in my church back in Northern Ireland, we used to have what was called the mouse man bread. Now this thing was bread that had been made, a, a, a specific shaped loaf had been made decades ago. But it was so beautiful that they glazed it and covered it up so that it was a, a permanent um, exhibition. And they called it the Mouseman Loaf because there used to be a, a furniture designer in, in, in England um, called Robert Thompson. He worked in the late 19th, early 20th century. And everything that he ever made, he put a little mouse on it. And he was known as Mouseman. And this piece of bread had a little bit of mouse on it, a little mouse on it, almost as if it was eating. And uh, we used to, I used to remember that was always the centre of uh, of the display we used to also um have a children's choir and we used to sing the harvest the harvest hymns and there was one that we used to sing called bringing in the sheaves does anybody remember it we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves and I remember one year uh, the children's choir was going to sing it and before the service started we all got together in a wee huddle and um we put together a, a, an evil plan and we stood up and we sang bringing in the sheets and at the end of the the service in the evening it started from half six to half seven at the end of the service all of the youth gr uh, group would get together and they would take the the produce and there was lots and lots and lots of it and we put them into plastic bags and tie them up and we would go out in senior members cars where, where was health and safety but we got into senior members cars and we drove off into the uh, into the countryside and into the different residential homes of the area and we gave the produce to uh, some of the older folks and we would sing as we went around almost like carol services going around different places so at harvest we would go around the different residential homes and we would sing um some of the the harvest sims to the uh so the cook to the the old folks so it was a, it was a lovely time harvest was great we used to have a, a teacher in school and her her husband was a farmer and we used to go up, some of us would go up into his fields and he would show us how to do the, the, the you know, let's set up the combine harvester and the tractor and show us how harvesting was done. So it was, it was a lovely, live, great, great time of the year, um, living so close to the countryside. So yeah, like, like everybody else that's spoken, um, really good memories. has broken like the first morning blackbird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for them singing fresh from the world sweet the rain's it from heaven like the first dew fall on the first grass praise for the sweetness of the wet garden sprung in completeness where it be found mine is the sunlight mine is the morning Born of the one night, even so plain. Praise for elation, praise for the morning. God's recreation of the new day. To the depths of the sea, creation revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that he sings, all exclaiming, Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them 
by name You're an amazing God All powerful, untamable No struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You're an amazing God Who has told every lightning bolt Where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You're an amazing God, indescribable Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are an amazing God All powerful, untamable All struck you fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Um, the first reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, second part of verse 4 to 14. So that's Philippians chapter 3. If anyone thinks he can trust in external ceremonies, I have even more reason to feel that way. I was circumcised when I was a week old. I am an Israelite by birth of the tribe of Benjamin, a pure-blooded Hebrew. As far as keeping the Jewish law is concerned, I was a Pharisee, and I was so zealous that I persecuted the church. As far as a person can be righteous by obeying the commands of the law, I was without fault. But all those things that I might count as profit, I now reckon as loss for Christ's sake. Not only those things, I reckon everything as complete loss for the sake of what is so much more valuable, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have thrown everything away. I consider it all as mere refuse, so that I may ga gain Christ and be completely united with him. I no longer have a righteousness of my own, the kind that is gained by obeying the law. I now have the righteousness that is given through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is based on faith. All I want to know is to know all I want is to know Christ and to experience the power of his resurrection, to share in his sufferings and become like him in his death, in the hope that I myself will be raised from death to life. Running towards the goal. I do, I do not claim that I have already succeeded. Have I gone on too far? No. Sorry, I do not claim that I have already succeeded or have already become perfect. I keep striving to win the prize for which Jesus Christ has already won me to himself. Of course, my brothers, I really do not think that I have already won it. The one thing I do, however, is to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So I run straight towards the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Jesus Christ to the life above. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is Matthew chapter 21, verse 33. To the end, Matthew chapter 21. The parable of the tenants in the vineyard. 
Listen to another parable Jesus said. There was once a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a hole for the wine press and built a watchtower. Then he let out the vineyard to tenants and went on a journey. When the time came to gather the grapes, he sent his slaves to the tenants to receive his share of the harvest. The tenants seized his slaves, beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again the man sent other slaves, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. Surely they will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the owner's son. Come on, let's kill him and we'll, we will get his property. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Jesus asked. He will certainly kill those evil men, they answered, and let the vineyard out to other tenants who will give him his share of the harvest at the right time. Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read what the scriptures say? The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. And so I tell you, added Jesus, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce the proper fruits. The chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables and knew that he was talking about them. So they tried to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, and say good morning. Uh, and for those of you viewing this on YouTube, I'm David uh, and I'm one of the readers, one of the licensed lay ministers for Kidderminster East. And today you are joining us in the room for a very special occasion. Not only is it harvest, it's actually our birthday. We are six months old today. This is the 26th continuous Kidderminster online church service since we planted this congregation way, way back on Easter Day 2020, um, when this thing called the pandemic was just starting. So congratulations and thank you to all the leaders and the preachers and the prayers and the readers and the musicians and the hosts and the children's workers and the administrators and the phone callers and the whatsappers and the facebookers who have made this amazing church possible today. Now today it is all about you. You, the, the congregation of this church um, and you, oh and you, and don't forget about you. And if you're on page two, you as well. And I don't want to talk too long um, because we're going to use breakout rooms uh, and small discussion groups a little bit uh, later in this sermon. And I'm going to ask you uh, to look at two questions based on today's readings, but really focused on this online congregation at the minute. They're related to the, the wider parish questionnaire, but they're also different. I'll, I'll explain why that is. And they definitely do not replace that questionnaire. So do, do go online, do talk to Karen, do get that questionnaire, which is about the future uh, of the face-to-face, -face, the future of where we might be going as a parish. Um, so here they are, if you just let me share my screen. So uh, what I'm gonna be asking you to look at is, what have you valued from the last six months about our online meetings and what's next for our online church? How do we, like Paul says, continue to strain towards the prize? And I'll put those up in a little bit again. So in our two readings today, we see two different ways of thinking about future. Both look backwards and then they use that view to inform future. 
In Matthew, we find these tenants in the vineyard who, when facing an uncertain future, they return of the owner to collect his harvest. They choose to dig in. They choose to defy God. Uh, Because it's a picture of the times of the religious leaders and God. They they just want to hold on to what they have, even though it's not theirs to own. They are comfortable. They are safe. They're in charge. They don't want anyone changing the way they do things. Thank you very much. And so as they look backwards, they choose to shape their future. Much like the Israelites in our readings from Exodus recently, when... Share that. When they keep looking back to Egypt to inform their future going ahead. The opposite way to which God was actually asking them to go. And then we have Paul talking in Philippians. He also looks backwards, but he has no doubts about where he is going for his future. What gain I had, I now count it but loss for the sake of Christ. For forgetting what lies behind, I strain forward to what is ahead. I press on towards the goal, the upward call of Christ. So he puts his confidence in Christ as he faces his uncertain future, that righteousness that just depends on faith in God. So we have these two images. Let me bring them up for you again. Both look backwards and both look forwards. One is focused on holding on to the past and one puts faith in God for the future. And and so to our church here on our sixth month birthday, we still continue to face an uncertain future. What we planted here in March on Easter Day in response to the closure of churches has grown into something amazing in worship, in learning, in teaching, in prayer, in singing, in community, in friendship. Something special in its own right. And for those of us, and there are very many sitting here as I look around the room, those of us who cannot yet attend our physical churches, those who cannot yet attend the physical churches, because maybe your church is too small, or maybe you feel vulnerable, or maybe you're just not ready to return yet. This is your church. So today, I'm asking you those two questions. What have you valued from the last six months of our online meetings? And what's next for our online church? How do we, in Paul's words, continue to strain towards the prize? Online on a Sunday. On our Facebook pages. On our quiz nights. On your Zoom house group. On your prayer walking, on your picnics, all of them, these fresh expressions, if I can use that term, of what it means to be church together. So we're looking back in order to look forward. What have you really valued from the last six months? And how do we keep straining on towards the prize, which is Christ? good all right well i i hope that was helpful and if you are able to add anything into the chat 
um, because that, that's something which, which you're familiar with. Do that. It's those kind of positive, uh, what have we valued? Um, and, and just going around the rooms, what I was hearing was uh, accessibility for those who cannot get to a church. Um, I was hearing about relationship. I was hearing about small groups and discussions, ways of maybe drawing our friends and neighbours together. Um, all of these uh, are kind of a harvest of ideas of where this church now goes. Um, because today we give thanks to God for the harvest. And you know what? That harvest is sitting here in this room today and it's sitting out there on YouTube because together we have planted this church as a parish. This is an online church. This is a fresh expression of what it is to be church in a time of pandemic. And together we have grown in God and together we've also grown in number. Because I'm looking around the room, I can see people who yet are to know what it is to be in a face-to-face -face church in Kidderminster East. Those who have joined us uh, during this pandemic time. And it's so lovely to welcome you into the room as well. And this kind of harvest of ideas and thoughts for our online future next, whilst we wait, whilst we wait for our churches to reopen fully. And we pray don't we? We pray for that day when we can meet again face to face and sing God's praises together. These ideas may help us to discern God's will forward for how we worship and meet together and develop in Christ. But you might be asking why? Because after the harvest comes the planting of the next season the planting of the seeds that grow and develop, ready for the next harvest. And so we look backward and we look forward. And we'll be able to continue to go God's way and to grow in him, having confidence in Christ. None of us knows what this uncertain future holds, nor do we know what the next six months may bring us. We just don't know, do we? But, but this is what we know to be true. That Christ is the solid rock. That Christ is the cornerstone. Let us pray. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough, even for a proper meal each day. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. Locally, we pray for the work of help, night stop, the local food banks, providing food, support and counselling for those in need. Help us to share the harvests of the world more fairly so that everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food for the shopkeepers, the transport delivery drivers, the processors. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home and in other countries. Help us to want to buy fairly traded goods wherever we can, so that everyone can work with dignity and we might work towards the elimination of poverty. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world around us, for the flowers, the trees, the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources so that there will be clean water, clean air, and that the wildlife 
will maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. We pray for those in government, locally, nationally and internationally, that the policies they introduce and follow will take into account those who are suffering and the needs of the environment. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too become a new creation, walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. In this harvest time, we ask your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours, and in those who are sick. In a moment of quiet, we name before you those known to us. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, whose work here is done. Help us to recognise the importance of just relations and community and help us to become good stewards of all you continue to give us. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Let us join together in the prayer we were taught by Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final blessing of this morning, or this afternoon as it is now, um, is a, a, a visual thing. God's joy in our hearts, God's peace in our world, and make it a wide sweep, because it's a big world, and may God's love be known among us. And either touch palms or hold hands, or maybe reach out to the screen if you'd like to do it that way. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all and with those whom we love, this day and forevermore. Amen.